pardon the informal introduction, but this is Mr. Jones. He's a newspaper man around here. As a matter of fact, he's the editor of the local paper. Right now, he has a story to tell. It's a story about people in this town, a local story. But it's one that might happen in any Australian town. It's about people who are contributing to the future greatness of Australia. It is a story about new Australians. No strangers here. The story began some weeks ago on the 840 to Littleton. It's rich country in this part of the world, growing crops and orchards of ripening fruit. It has hills and dales, water pools, grazing cattle, and little farmhouses on the hillsides that make up so much of the Australian countryside. It's a good country. These people aren't very interested in the scenery. They're the regular travelers on the 840. Some of them have been traveling to and fro to business every day for years. They've seen it all many times before. But there are others in the train, new Australians, a family, a family of migrants from overseas, a family headed for resettlement in Australia, a father, a mother, a girl, and a small boy. To them, all this is new and exciting. It is a new land seen for the first time. They've come a long way, 10,000 miles from Europe. For them, the scenery means a lot. This is their new home. Today, they are happy, happier than they thought they would ever be again. There's quite an upgrade as you come into Littleton. The train slows almost to a walk as it passes through the cutting in the gum trees at the top. For a while, the gum leaves form a green curtain blocking the view, before they start to slide away, revealing little white farmsteads on ploughed land. A happy, smiling land. And now down the hill into the valley, and there's the town itself with a church spire landmarking it on the skyline. This is an exciting moment for the newcomers. This is the moment they've been waiting for, to have somewhere at last they can call their own. They are coming now into Littleton, a rich country town in the Australian pastoral belt. In addition to its riches from the soil, it has a growing industry as the nation develops its scheme for decentralization. For the migrants, it is home at last. Home after ten long years. Ten long, weary years of being moved from place to place, without a friend, with nowhere to rest. Now they have found a new country, a place to live, to live a free life. They have found a home where they can forget the past and start life anew. This is Journey's End.
As the 8.40 pulls into the station, the regulars swing off it and hurry away. After them, more slowly come the migrants with their few belongings. The regulars move on. They have their own affairs to attend to, their own homes to go to, and the station is soon empty. Empty but for this family. For them, this means arrival. Arrival in Australia for good. It can feel pretty lonely at first, when you realize that you're now on your own in this big, wide, open land of Australia. So, a little bewildered, they pick up their bags. The bags they had carried halfway around the world. Jack Thompson from the brickyards. The boss asked me to pick you up. Sorry I'm a bit late. Mr. Jack Thompson. That's right. How are you? Oh, good out. Thanks. How are you? Yeah. Uh, my wife. Hello. Mm -hmm. My daughter, Christina. Hello. My boy. Uh, how are you, boy? Oh, uh, his son. Ah, son. How are you, son? <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we go? Yeah. Come on. This way. This is Littleton. It may be your town, it is any Australian town. Mr. Jones has lived here for the past 16 years and knows every inch of it. It's only a small town, but he likes it that way. And it's easy to get along with the folks here. Our friend, the editor, came into the story some days later. He left his home at the usual time on the usual walk to the office. It was one of those golden mornings that makes you glad you're alive. There were cicadas singing and there were the usual chats along the street with the people he knows. And that, in Littleton, means nearly everybody. Good morning, Mrs. Swinton. Good morning to you. Up early as usual. All oh, the mornings are lovely this time of the year, aren't they? Oh, lovely. How's the little girl? Well, indeed. Yes, she is. Ah, good morning, darling. Good morning, I've got six kittens. <laughs> six kittens? <laughs> My word, that's news for the town. No, no, not now. Some other time. Well, bye bye, darling. Say to the. Bye bye. <laughs> Tell her. Good morning. Good bye. Yes, a friendly, pleasant town. But then you don't know Littleton, do you? These are the council chambers where the people of Littleton run their own community affairs, where they have a say in their own town government. And that's the local school. It's a good average school where the young can learn to become real Australians and use their democratic rights wisely when they grow up. Here they have all the benefits of big city life, or most of them, but they have more. In a small town, there's a friendly familiarity you just can't beat. You know people and call them by their first names. They have their local police station, their court of law, justice and equality before the law, that's what they like and they have their churches. There are five churches in Littleton because freedom of worship's another thing they stand for. Yes, it's a good town. But there's more to a good town than freedom and justice, bricks and mortar. There are the 101 little human aspects that mean so much the friendly hellos and smiles you get from your fellow citizens. It's the human side of a town that counts, the side that makes you feel you belong and that you really matter in the scheme of things. That morning, Mr. Jones was about to pick up his mail when he saw the new Australian family for the first time. They were window shopping in the main street. It's not very hard to pick newcomers to Littleton. He wondered where they'd come from and what they were doing in Littleton. A good 
good-looking couple. Mmm, and a good-looking family, too. He found himself wondering how newcomers to a place would feel. Different? Yes. But then they'd probably be happy enough in their own way. Hello, Bert. Hello, Bert. Wife okay? Fine. Doc says she'll be on her feet in a couple of days. <laughs> Good. There's been a lot of these foreign stamps coming through lately. Is that so? I suppose it's them foreigners from Europe. Hmm. I wonder how they'll go here. I'll listen for you, Bill. Oh, thanks. So, looks like we're going to have some rain. Well, we could do with it. Why well, would you, don't you think? Dear sir, why must we let these foreigners come to live in Littleton? We don't want them. This is an Australian town, made up of real Australian people. And we want to keep it that way. Yours, etc., a true Australian. Anything wrong, Bill? No, it was all right. So long, Bill. So long, Bill. A friendly town, a real Australian town, made up of real Australians like Frank Schultz, whose father came from Germany 48 years ago, Jock Mackenzie from Scotland, Bert Tomlinson, born and bred in Lancashire, England. None of these people was born within thousands of miles of Australia, yet they're some of the real Australians in Littleton, some of the men who've made this Australian town what it is today. At first, Jones wondered what he'd do with that letter publish it? But would that be in the public interest, and what good would it do? Foreigners. We don't want them. Sign, a true Australian. Foreigners have come to this town before. There were probably people who said we don't want them. Maybe somebody wrote a letter to the editor about them, too. But those foreigners found their place in the community and gave it their talents, their skills. They mixed with the local people, and today, they are some of the best citizens of the town, real Australians. What did the writer of the letter know about these foreigners coming into Littleton? What did any of them know? For that matter, what did Mr. Jones know? And then, he saw them again. The same family he'd seen outside the post office. The father seemed to have his heart set on a bicycle. Why a bicycle? Perhaps he was thinking back to the Europe of the past 10 years, when even the simplest means of transport were barred to you, unless you were a favored one, unless you wore a special uniform. For him, a bicycle was a symbol of his newly won liberty, a guarantee that he'd found a land of freedom. But no, he didn't buy it that day. The family held the editor's attention as they passed by, so did the sign on the Main Street store, sure to get everything. Everything? Could one buy a family-sized dose of fair play? Fair play for everyone? The shops were fascinating them. They'd come from the scarcities of Europe. They knew how it felt to be hungry, really hungry. And now the sight of so much food dazzled them. And the little boy, Janice, like little boys all the world over, was interested in the sports store. The cricket bats were something new to him. 
and perhaps one day he would have one all for himself. Suddenly, Jones felt that he had to know this family. He had to know whether Littleton wanted these foreigners, as they were called. And so he set out to get to know them. The mother was working as a housekeeper at a nearby farmhouse, where she and her husband had been given living quarters. Her name was Mariana. Come in. Ah, good morning. I'm Mr. Jones, the editor of the local newspaper. Please, come in. Ah, thank you. I was wondering if you'd be good enough to uh, tell me the story of your life. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah. Just a moment. Ireland. <laughs> yes. Spice, eggs, milk, sugar. Oh, this should be a good cake. Yes. Would you like a piece? Thanks very much. Thank you. Mmm, it is good. Now I know what my story will be. Would you mind giving me your recipe? Oh, yes, you are welcome. Mm, thank you very much. Now, to begin with. First, you use a kilogram flour. Use one kilogram. Kilogram. Three coops full. Uh, coops. How? Oh, three full cups. Then mix it in half liter milk. One liter? One half coops milk. Or oh, one half cup. One and a half. Oh, I see. One and a half cup. Yes. Mm. Stir well? Yes. It is easy to mix. Easy to mix. The cake was something new to him, but the ingredients were just the same as he'd seen his wife use time and time again. Oh, <laughs> and then what? Oh, put in a cinnamon. Cinnamon. How much? How much? Messerspitzel? Messerspitzel. Enough to cover sixpence. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh. All this watch time. Bake until well brown. Bake until well browned. Oh, Ted. Yes. Print this in the woman's page tomorrow. And head it a... Uh, easy to mix. Easy to mix. Can Littleton women cook? women cook. Can Littleton women cook? Can Littleton women cook? Can Littleton women cook? Allen, Flor, Can Littleton women cook? Cook. 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 All this 
Miss Watchtie. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my little experiment worked. Here, I tried your almond cake, and we all liked it very much. Dear Mr. Editor, can we have another recipe like that? Hmm? Dear sir, even my wife could get it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this one. Mine was flat and sodden. Was there a printing error? <laughs> <laughs> Well, here were real Australians showing their interest in things foreign, even in such a little thing as a cake. But then, life is made up of little things. One day, the editor was driving past the town school when he heard children playing on the oval. He looked to see if Janice was there among them. Janice, Mariana's son, who was so interested in cricket bats. Janice was there, but he wasn't among them. It seemed that the children of Littleton didn't want foreigners. It seemed that way. Hiya, Joe. Hiya. Don't you play cricket? Yes. Well, why aren't you playing? No one asked me to play. Oh, gosh, you don't have to be asked. You just play. Come on. Hi, get out of the way. No, Joe's in this. Here, Joe, you stay there. <laughs> For all we know, Janice may still be running. He still has a lot to learn about cricket, but he has friends at the school who will help him. Christina, like so many new Australian girls, worked at the local hospital. As a trainee nurse, she found much to do and much to learn. There were difficulties, difficulties of language, our different method of graduating thermometers and measures and so on. But it was easy to learn when there was someone to help you. Christina was only nine, a little schoolgirl when her country was wrecked by war. She was just a child when she and her family found themselves fugitives, displaced persons of Europe. But Christina is no longer displaced. She is settling down to her new life among new friends. And if there are occasional problems associated with such things as the special language used in hospitals, there are friends to help her out. This is the one for the tonsils on the balcony. This is for the appendix in 17. And this is for the fractured tibia. <laughs> That's the one for the patient that came in today, the second bed on the left. That's the one that was operated upon yesterday, near the window. <laughs> and this is for number 12. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no more fruit for number 15, sister. Doctor wants to try him with us. He's a massive hives again. There he goes again. <laughs> That fellow in number 12. He's ringing all day long. Our Casanova. You go, nurse. No, you'd better stay here. I'll settle him. Now, nurse, are you sure you know which is which? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
What do you want this time? I've forgotten what it is. Well, you better get a notebook and pencil and write it down next time. <laughs> 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 Christina was keen to learn and quick to learn. But there were human difficulties, bigger and smaller ones, sometimes personal, sometimes those of temperament or tongue. <laughs> and I've never known a Red Cross ball to be so much fun. Well, you seem to be enjoying yourself. I was enjoying myself. And wasn't the band marvellous? Don't you think so? Good morning, nurse. Good morning, Doctor. How's Christina getting on, sister? She seems to be getting along very nicely. She's apparently quite popular. Popular? Ah, that's good. I didn't see her at the ball last night. No, she wasn't there. Pity. She'd have enjoyed that. Maybe she's shy, although she meets plenty of her own people. Perhaps she sticks too close to her own people. I wonder. Whose fault could that be? Do you think we make her feel fully at home here? Oh, I think so. Staff is very nice to her, and so are some of the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'd better be getting along. Was there anything else you wanted to see me about? Oh, yes. I was wanting to speak to you about uh, Mr. Tilbury's injections. Mm -hmm. uh, should we repeat? Yes. I think so. These people were interested in Christina, interested in whether she was getting from Australia the share of happiness she was entitled to. As time went by, Christina made many friends among her fellow workers and found her place among them. At church, Christina used her old hymn book and sometimes when she forgot, she sang in the language she'd spoken in Europe. But she was singing the same hymn and worshipping the same God. May God preserve the leaders of our nations to unite in this distressed world. And now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, be ascribed as is most justly due, all might, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Hymn number 464. A stronghold safe, our God is still.
Alex still has his eye on that bike. He's looked at it every time he's passed Bert Wheeler's shop. But today, it seems that Alex has made up his mind. please. What sort do you want? Please? I said, what sort did you want? Oh. This one, please. That one? Yeah. Cost you 16 quid. Pardon? 16 pounds. Oh. 16 pounds. That's a lot of money. It's a good bike. Oh, yes, yes. It, uh, could I make payment down first and perhaps pay some more later? You mean pay terms? Yes. Oh, I suppose so. Where do you work? At Brickworks. Oh, you're one of those migrants. Well, listen. How do I know you'll be all right? How do I know you won't be going back home to Europe before you finish paying it off? Go back? Oh, <laughs> I know go back. <laughs> I wait three years to come here. <laughs> I know go back to Europe. This is my home now. Oh, I suppose it'll be all right. Thank you very much. What's your name? Alexander Alexander Black Stalskis. How do you spell it? A L E X A N D E R. Write it down yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's so funny? Pity your manners weren't as good as his. Alex got his bike, and now he's happy. Now he can ride to the brickworks and save his bus fare, and that will help to pay off the bike. Things are better at the brickworks now. They've been short-staffed ever since the war, but things are easing, and Alex is doing his bit like thousands of other new Australians throughout the land. Yes, Alex is settling in well, although there are still some little personal clashes that have to be met. Oh, pipe down. This isn't a blooming opera house. Ah, oh, don't take any notice of him. His liver's bad today. What's the matter? The missus been nagging at you again? May I sing, then? Oh, she can. Sing all you want. It's a free country. Da ra ra boom de a. Hey, you de fall ra. 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 Knock off. Time for tucker. Don't forget the meeting. What meeting? Oh, you know, to elect the committee for the picnic. Aren't you going to vote? Oh, no, thank you. I don't have a vote. I am not uh, naturalized yet. <laughs> 
Ah, you don't have to be naturalized for this. This is our own affair. Every worker's got a vote. Come on. Thank you. Objections? All right then, I declare Tom Jones elected in charge of the picnic. <laughs> now we want someone for the entertainment committee. Any nominations? Hey, how about Alex? He's always singing. <laughs> I nominate Alex. Oh, no, no. Come, don't be shy. Bring some of your friends. They can dance and make music. Yes, I second the nomination, Mr. Chairman. Any other nominations? Oh, I declare Alex Stalskis. Uh, Alex Stalskis elected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will try. I, I will bring some music and dancing. <laughs> and so to the picnic. And ah, there are the dancers. Come on, Joe, the race is on. Yes, Alex was as good as his word. As he promised, he brought music and dancing. Mr. Jack Thompson, Miss Mal and Miss Evie, how do you do? So new Australians and old Australians got together to enjoy themselves and to share the brightness of an Australian picnic. Well, Alex, you promised the music, so come on, let's hear from you first. Soon he was playing with all the happiness that was in his heart. And the picnic is off to a good start. As for Janice, he's off to a good start, too. I've got a piece of cake. Would you like to have that? No, no, you keep it to yourself. Yes, do have a piece. It's a special recipe. You've never tasted anything like this. Where did you get the recipe? From the local newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> that day they were all happy, but one of the happiest was Alex. He was very proud of his committee badge. It meant that he'd been accepted by his Australian mates. He was proud because he and his family were now part of the Littleton community, of the Australian community. No strangers here. But the big moment for Alex was still to come, the dancing.
Christina. Christina. to mix. <laughs> what a perfect view. What a perfect view. <laughs> over there in the distance, Christian, is the sea. And over here, stretching far beyond the horizon, is the Australian bush. Gum trees and shrubs, the sun and plenty of sky. The people that live there and all that goes with it. And that glorious feeling of being free. Was it like that where you come from? I can't remember much about my country. But it is beautiful here. I like it. I like your country. Our country, Christina? Our country. A friendly town, a real Australian town, a town where old Australians and new Australians can live together peacefully and happily. Jones felt sure of that. The friendly atmosphere of the day had convinced him. The gay melodies of the picnic, the laughter of the people, the good fellowship were still with him when he returned late to his office. Tonight, Editor Jones has got the last chapter for his story. The story he set out to get which would tell him whether these new Australians, these foreigners from different parts of the world, can mix in freely and happily with the old Australians. He took trouble to get it, and he's glad that it's a story with a happy ending. But is it as simple as that, Mr. Jones? Do all stories of new Australians have happy endings in all Australian towns? Has even the story in Littleton really a happy ending? Foreigners, we don't want them, remember? Yes, there is still opposition to migrants, but it must be overcome because ours is a vast land. We have not stood still, we have gone on. The lights of our big cities reflect our progress of the past. A progress based on personal endeavour and goodwill to your neighbour. But with the help of the Australians of the future, the newcomers from overseas, we can go much further. We must go much further. We must build cities and towns, new factories, new projects spreading out over the Australian countryside. And for this, we need people. And these new citizens are coming here. There is a national drive which is gaining momentum day by day. 9,000 migrants on way to Australia, 116,900 here in nine months. Government plan to befriend migrants. These are signposts pointing into our future. It now rests with us to make these newcomers welcome. A start has been made. Already voluntary organisations throughout Australia are tackling the problem. A great movement is sweeping over the country as Australians, convinced of the vital need for more and more migrants, are working for their rapid assimilation. They know that there is more to migration than just bringing people here. They know that if these people are to be with us, they must become part of our national family. They know that the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. They are working vigorously and willingly so that the newcomers may say that we are friendly people in friendly towns. So they may be proud to become the Australian citizens of tomorrow this is a nationwide movement in which we should all play our part. The untouched riches of our soil are waiting to be tapped, industries to be expanded, resources developed. 
And to do this, we need help. Help from millions, many millions. And with them, together, we will create more wealth for the nation, more jobs, more satisfaction and contentment for all. This is our greatest chance to build up our country, our greatest chance to make it the land of prosperity, which is its destiny. One continent with one people and no strangers here. It is our chance to mould a new and greater Australia from the melting pot of many peoples. We want them. We need them. Yours, etc., a true Australian. The editor, also a true Australian.